Hello, everybody. I'm excited to see you in class today. I have a lot to cover. So I hope you brought your questions about your printmaker. So that's the whole point of this class. It's a different format today. We're not doing a project based class at all. It is more of a Q&A. Send us your questions. Jimena is going to help me field them. If I miss something, just make sure you put your questions in the chat. I'm going to try to watch it while I show you what the answers to your questions and some tips and tricks using your printmaker. So I'm going to be printing a lot of different things. We'll be working in the app. And I hope you brought your questions because that's really what I'm relying on today. I'll try to cover a lot of things that, that I know are troubleshooting issues that people may have been having with their printmaker because we want you to have such a good experience with it. It's such a fun, handy tool and it can be used in so many different ways. Okay, so we're gonna start just by grabbing our printmaker. So when you get it, I'm gonna kind of do a walkthrough of how you set it up really quick in case someone's having trouble with that. Okay, so here's the little printmaker. It comes in this little base, which when you pull it out of the box, it will be locked. So the whole entire bottom of the base turns, unlock it, and then you can lift it out of the base. So this we call home base, this little bottom piece right here. When you're not using your printmaker, just leave it sitting right there in home base. It's happy there because it keeps the ink head, the print cartridge head right there, nice and safe and sealed in so that you don't lose any of your ink. Keeps it nice and wet in there, okay? So the next thing is this printmaker itself. So it will also come with a cord. It's just a standard micro USB and it plugs in right here on the bottom of the base. Can you see that right there? Okay, so that's just the micro USB. Plug it into any base that you have from just standard USB and charge your printmaker before you use it. On my desk, I just leave mine plugged in in home base. That's just where I like it to live. And so I know it's always charged right when I want to use it. Okay, when you first get it and it's charged and it's ready to go, make sure you unlock the bottom and then you just turn it on. Mine's already on. You can see this action button is already lit up right here. It will be dark when you first get yours and you just hold it down for like one to three seconds. Just count one, two, three, take it off. And it will have this rainbow of lights and color. You get a little disco show and it's ready to pair with your device. Okay, on your device, what device can you use? You need a Bluetooth connection. So I'm using my Samsung phone. So this is an Android phone, but it also works on iPhones. Apple works on tablets, iPads, things like that. So you just need to have a connection because it talks to your printer through the Bluetooth. Okay, so you'll just, to get the app, let me show you what the app looks like. I don't know if you can see it. I have mine just pinned, let me see. Okay, so right here, this little symbol that has that same play symbol, that is the app. And you just look for it in your app store, just type in printmaker and it will come up right at the top. So you'll just want to install that like you do any other app on your phone. Okay, once you have it, you just open it and this is what the home screen is going to look like, okay? So now to connect your printer, up here at the top, right here in this corner, there is the little icon that looks just like the top of our printmaker. So you'll click on that. And the first time that you use it, you should actually go into the settings on your phone. Let me get to my settings if I can find where I put my settings. Okay, and you'll go into your connections and you'll go into Bluetooth and you'll find your printmaker. So there's my printmaker right there. So I always turn my printmaker on first. You'll only have to do this the first time you use it, right? So you'll wanna connect your Bluetooth to the printmaker there. So look for a new device, connect to your printmaker in your Bluetooth. And that's the only time you have to do that. From then on, just like mine, when you open it, it will find your printmaker if it's powered on and connect automatically in your app. If it didn't for some reason, so this is sometimes where people have problems. They're saying it's not connecting, right? This screen will look a little different and it will say, it'll have a refresh button at the bottom and you can refresh it to see if it can find the printmaker. If that's not working, then what I suggest doing, this has worked for me every time I've had a problem, is close your app, just close all the way out of it, turn your printmaker off by holding it for one to three seconds again until it powers down, 
it'll flash a red light three times and then push it again to turn it back on and reset. Just like anything technology, you know how they say, you know, try closing out of everything on your computer and restarting your computer. That's kind of the same concept here. It just might need a little bit of help to reset those connections. And it should, when you turn it back on and you open your app. So have your printmaker on first, then open your app. It should connect directly to your printmaker. Okay. Other things here in this little section is we have right now we're on our printer. Okay. This is the settings section. When I connect, click to that printer button. We also have a diagnostic screen. And this is how you can check to make sure that all of your print heads are clean. I've never had to use this because the printmaker is awesome. But if you are like running out of one color or you are um, having trouble, like you wanna clean your print heads, this is how you would do it. So you could select each color individually and print until it runs clean, okay? So you just run a print. And you can do that right from there. It says print, connects it, sends it, and you just print the lines and it will clean the print head. This last section is the accounts and it just tells you where you're logged in. So when you first set up your account, you'll want to log in with an email. So I just use my American Crafts email and I log into that email the same. Like once you do it on your phone, you don't have to log in again. It just, the app will remember it for you. But the cool thing about this is there's also a printmaker website that you can also design in. So if you like to use a mouse, when we get into designing, I'll show you more of this, but you can design on your computer and it will automatically sync to your device and everything you've done will be saved on the computer under that same login and under your phone under that same login. So you just wanna make sure you use the same email for your account, just like all of the other things we have going on where we log in under multiple, you know, if we have one account for one printmaker app, you're gonna log in with that same email every time. Okay, making sense? All right. Okay, another tip is I have found so I have my one printmaker machine and I have found if I try to switch between my Android phone and my iPad tablet, when I try to use my iPad, it's having connection problems. And so if that happens to you, just make sure you go into that same settings on your old device, right? Go under Bluetooth and forget or delete that printmaker off of that one device before you try to log into it on the other Bluetooth device. Does that make sense to you? Okay, that seems to help. The, the printmaker was really designed to just be logged into one Bluetooth account. So sometimes it's a little glitchy when you try to have it open in two Bluetooth devices at a time. So I found that I just like working off my phone because I always have it with me. I can design on the go and save it for later for printing. And so I just chose this to be my device. If you like a tablet better, I would say, if you already put it on your phone, forget the device on your phone and just commit to using it on your tablet or your iPad. It will work out better for you. But the connect, the syncing between a, like a desktop computer and a mobile device, there's no problem there. It syncs just perfectly. So you can have, I even can have them open on my desktop and on my phone at the same time and I can watch it sync immediately right over to my mobile device. So it's, it works with a Samsung tablet. Yep, works with an iPad. Um, I know like be patient with the app. It's still being developed and fine tuned. This isn't that old of a tool. So, you know, with any technology, they're going to have to find the errors, find the glitches and try to troubleshoot those. So if you run into problems, you can contact customer service um, and they can make note of those and forward them on to our app developers. They also have awesome answers to questions. So if you're having trouble, you there's some certain places you can go in the chat. I think Jimena is going to link um, uh, the website. So it just goes right to wearememorykeepers.com backslash printmaker. And there's also um, on that page, there's a ton of helpful things and there's an FAQ sheet for troubleshooting and all kinds of things like that. You can also access that page right in your app. So let me show you how to do that. So, okay. On this other side of the screen over here, we have, right. Our little printmaker that we did. So right next to that, 
is a question mark. So there's two ways you can get into your help. So that little question mark icon, I just tapped it and now I'm in help. So right there, I can download the user manual and just read through all of the instructions, the FAQs and everything that are in the user manual. You can click over one and these are instructional videos that we have made here that Ali Doswell has helped with as well that shows an overview video with Ali, a app walkthrough of all the features of the app and how to use it on video. And these are like YouTube videos they are on the website as well. And then this one, our project ideas and inspiration right there. Then you have your warranty information and a helpful guide on how to install your ink cartridge, which I can show you in just a moment. And then there's also the contact information for customer support if you need it right there. So it's all right there in the help, okay? You can also access that over here on this side at the home button, it drops down and there's a help field right there, takes you to the same place, right? Then you have access to all those videos, information right there, okay, handy. Okay, so let me show you how the print cartridge goes into this machine, okay? <clears throat> so when you do the print cartridge, you're going to remove the top case, Oop, hang on, the side. It's one side, so one side will come off and one side won't, okay? So that's the side you want. One side will come off and that's where your little print cartridge lives is right in there, okay? And you'll see that the top of the print cartridge is this purple color, okay? And then you've got these two arrows right there and those two arrows should line up with that, okay? So these are Printmaker ink cartridges made by HP. They're the tricolor all in one. And just like when you're putting it in your printer, it will come with a little protective sheet that covers the print head itself. So remember that, remove that little sticker, and then you just drop that in at the bottom. I'm doing it facing away from me, so it's harder. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you drop it in the bottom and then snap it in to where that purple line lines up to the two arrows and you're ready to go. So that's how you install it the first time. And it's also how you would replace it if you needed to replace your ink cartridge. You can get the replacement ink cartridges at Michael's. So that's where you should go to get a new one, but they are meant to last a long time. I have only ever replaced this once and I use it all the time in my job and I print a ton. So I've only had to replace it one time. And you can also see your ink levels in those same settings where we were before where it had all the diagnostics. You can see your ink levels and if you're running low on one, it's right there in that same place. So they last a long time, it goes a long way because we're doing just little prints, right? Little prints at a time. So it doesn't go through it as fast as a normal large printer where you're printing a full sheet. Okay, let's see, what else do I want to cover? Okay. Did all that. I had to make notes so I didn't forget anything to tell tell you guys. Amanda, did anyone have a question so far? I'm Not kind of so far, far from my chat, so I can't see it as well. So you may have to help me with that. It's okay. Okay. No right now. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I hope you're all with me. Okay. So we're gonna go back in here on this home screen and just I'm gonna talk about what all of this stuff is and how we use it. Okay. So first, you see this great big image. So right here will be the newest set of images that has been added into the printmaker library in the app. So you can click on that if you want to, and you can see all of the different collections of images that are available in the printmaker app. So there's a couple ways to access. You can buy the collection or you can be a subscriber. Okay. And so all of that information is in here. Okay. There's terms and conditions. It just links you over, right? Okay, um, privacy, and if you have a subscription code or a promo code from a store that you would type it in right there and then you would be able to get it. So to download one, I've already downloaded it, but you can preview it before downloading it. So you just click on whichever collection you wanna look at. And inside the collection, you've got clip art patterns and templates. So these are all single images. This one's a travel themed one, travel buddies. So you can see all of the images there, patterns, are repeatable patterns that I will show you that you could repeat and make a long border out of it. You can do, print them on ribbon. You can do them a single time or a multiple time. Really, you can do that with any of the images, but these were kind of designed with that in mind. And templates are changeable things. So these are items where like this says, our adventure in Australia. If I click on that, I can change that text to whatever 
city I want. So templates are editable. So let's say, let's just go Austin since I already had Australia. Okay, so see how I was able to temp to change that template. Okay, to get back to home. Okay, so that's that's what's in each collection. You can also see all of the collections you have right here. This also notes right there that I am a subscriber. So whenever a new collection drops, it will show up right here. If you're a subscriber, you just click into it. And then right down here, it will say download. Or if you purchase it, that's the same way you do it. You would click download and then it will download and then it will show up in your homepage under my collections. Okay, so you can see all of the collections here. Now, what's cool about this too, is as you save, and I'll show you this as we start working within the app, you can save and create your own collections. So let me find one that I've done. So this was for a Michael's class on March 9th. So I made my own collection called 3922 Michael's Class Organizing, where I saved all of my images that were related to that class. So you could save all of your images that were related to a project, a specific project under your own collection. And if you don't save it to a collection, it will go into this collection, which is called unsorted right here. So these are some where I hadn't saved them. So see, there's that Australia one we were just working with. It'll say, oh, well, we're gonna just give you a little backup. We don't want you to lose it. So it will just save it right over in here. And you can go in and you can delete those and you can change them and you can, you know, if you don't need them or save them to another collection. So let's say, let me show you how to do your own collection. Here's the one we were just working in, okay. I could come up to here, I can move it, and I can choose an existing collection or I can add my own collection right there at the bottom. Give it a name. I'm gonna do 101 class, class 101. Okay, and now it's created that collection and I can find it. I wish these were in alphabetical order. That's some feedback that I have given to our developers that these would come in alphabetical order or last used first. So hopefully they're working on that. Right now you just kind of have to scroll through and look for the name. So right there is my class 101. Oh, it's not wanting to show me my image, but it is in there. I can see it right there. Okay. All right, so that's where the collections are. Okay, so that's on your home screen. Now, the store, is where you can go to, it just takes you right back where we were before when I clicked on that one newest edition. This is how you can buy collections, right? You can shop in the store, it takes you right back to where we were. Help, we already covered. Settings, takes us back to where, where we were at the top with that little printer icon. So there's multiple ways to get into everything, whatever works for your process best. Okay, and then this last one is create. So I'm gonna click on that one. Is there a question, Jimena? Yes, we do have a few questions um, all about subscri subscriptions. Um, so okay. the first one is, if your subscription ends, do you lose the images you had um, when you had the subscription? You know, I don't know the answer to that question, but I have an FAQ sheet. So let me look and see if it's in here really quickly. I'm lucky that I work for American Crafts and we are memory keepers, so I get a subscription. I don't know how that affects it. You know, that's a great question. And what I will do is suggest that you call customer care because they will know that better than I do. I can't see a, a question. I can't see an answer to that in my notes about subscriptions. So like you're asking if you would lose everything you designed, it should be still be saved, but it may ask you to purchase the images to print is what I'm guessing. But to clarify that, you may want to call customer service, which is in the help section on your printmaker app, right? Okay, sorry that I don't have a better answer for that. I've never run into that issue, so it's I don't know. Um, I'm assuming it would just say you can't print until it, you purchase it or resubscribe. That's what I'm assuming. Um, so we do have uh, mm -hmm. a couple other questions. Um, okay. Do you know how much the subscription is? Oh, gosh. Do you know how much the subscription is, Chesney? Let me see if I can look in the store. <clears throat> and while you do that, um, I'll go ahead and ask another question. Um, do you need a subscription if you only want to type words? No, you don't, because you can also upload your own images. So if you have your own images to upload, you can do that and I'll show you how to do it. 
So you can upload things straight from your phone. So if you have images or clip out or things that you've saved to your device, you can just upload those directly and print them without a subscription or buying any collections. The collections are nice because they were already designed to be the right size. So you may have to do some scaling and things with your own, but you definitely don't have to have a collection or a subscription to be able to use the printmaker. You can upload your own things. So I do not also do not have, you'd think that would be in the FAQ, but it does not tell me how much a subscription is. I am so sorry. Amanda so, in the chat just said that it's $29.99. Ah, thank so, you, Amanda. Good. You're the best. Thanks for answering that. Shannon, one last thing. Um, do you by okay. any chance have your, your tablet around? Um, everyone's having a little bit of trouble seeing um, from your phone. I do not have my tablet. Um, we have a work tablet and it was having issues today and I tried to work through it with IT and I could not get, they could not fix it in the meantime. So all I have is this. I can try to hold it up higher and maybe chain, we can change the upper camera. Okay, our videographer is gonna come behind me and change this upper camera to zoom in close so that when I hold it up, it will focus. I think that would or be- You may change it there. And then I can hold it up higher. So hopefully you can see. Let's see. He's going to try to do that. There. Is that better? Way better. Definitely. Yes. Okay. So yeah. what I'll do is I will, since I'm holding it over my head, you'll just be patient with me and I'll try to like watch my monitor and, and do everything, but I have to, may have to lower it for a second and then I'll raise it up and show you what I did. Okay. Is that good? Everybody. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're just making sure the focus is gonna be okay on that upper camera. Are we good? Okay, all right, so we have it. So now hopefully it will focus when I lift it. All right, cool, all right. All right, so here we are on this last drop down feature. Okay, so oop. <laughs> one second. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, and right here we have our home screen, the store we talked about, the help we talked about, the settings we talked about, which matches the printer icon over there, help. Okay, now we have create and you have create right there and you have create right down here. So just like everything else, you have two ways to get into a design canvas and that is what create is. So you can see that that has brought me in right there to this blank canvas with the tools I need, okay? If I go back to the home screen, I can also access that by clicking right down there, okay? And now I'm in the same place, right? So there's always a couple ways. So whatever way is more intuitive to you, go for it and use it. Okay, so now how do we get something on here to print? So this is where we design everything we're going to print. This print, print area is about half an inch. It's a little more than half an inch. It's about five eighths inch tall. And it is as long as you wanna make it, okay? So let's say we wanted to print an image that is in a collection. I'll start there because that's the easiest to show you. So right down here, you've got tools and you've got canvas. The canvas icon gives you all of the things you need to change this little print area that's right there, that little box that is now outlined. The tools one allows you to import things, images, shapes, text, and everything is right here. So let's say like shapes and, and text right there you can use without a subscription. And if you click on this one, which is import okay sorry i had to look at it what it was called because i just now i just know to click there so <laughs> that is where we can see our list of collections okay let's design something with an easter one since that's coming up okay this is a new easter collection so now i clicked that e easter one and now i can see all of those same things we looked at before right there's our clip art there's our patterns okay Let's click this one right here. This is a repeatable pattern of little daisies. Okay, so now it brought it into that space. So right now you can see it's going to print at the top of the print space with a little bit of space below it of my half inch. So if I want it to fill that entire half inch, what I would do is click outside the box here or close the tools icon. 
click on Canvas, and then you can use these drag tools. Sorry, it's hard for me when I'm not like actually looking at it. There we go. And drag that bigger. Then I can select my image and it has the drag tools as well. And I can make it bigger to fill that entire space. Okay. Now you'll notice I made my canvas just a little bit too big. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of white there. So troubleshooting issue. If you're doing a repeat, repeat print and you're getting white gaps between, it's probably because your canvas was left a little long because it will leave a, a gap. So I'm going to choose my canvas tools again and just bring that right up onto the edge of the border, okay? Now, you can see that I made it, this one is still fitting on my screen, but let's say that I made it super long and it's not fitting on my screen. You also have tools up here at the top that you can utilize. So right here is a zoom tool, okay? So I can zoom in really far to make sure that I don't have any white gaps on the end, and I can zoom out really far so that I can make this as long as I want and still be able to see it on my device. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the zoom level. Okay. The select tool, we'll just run through these really quick, is just like letting you select. If you had multiple images on there, oops, sorry. If you had multiple images on there at once, because you can do a whole line, let's do that. Let's delete this one. Okay, so I selected the image. Now down here, I have editing tools, right? So you can align right here. That will center it within whatever canvas, oops, whatever canvas, I clicked the wrong one because I'm working over my head. Here, undo. Okay, this is a glitch that I sometimes run into. So I'm really glad you guys saw that. So did you notice that when I aligned it, it suddenly like made my image really, really huge. Okay, that sometimes happens. I don't know why it happens. But I know that as long as you can grab it again and resize it, you can still resize it. Okay. Get this down to where I can actually see where my little end piece is so I can resize. So this is also part of that same glitch. See how my bounding box is now really large around my image? If that happens to you, what I suggest is just delete that image and re-import it because it's just some little bug in the app, you know, technology, we love it and we hate it at the same time. So I would just delete and go back in and find the image again and bring it back in. It doesn't happen very often. So I'm surprised it happened in this little class. So let's go back in and I'll show you how to do multiple images. Okay, let's say we want a butterfly and we want a flower, okay. So see how it will bring multiple on and then I can just use my tools to move them around, change them, right? Okay, I'm not really designing anything really pretty right now. I'm just showing the you the functionality. And then to add text, it's the same way, right down here, the little text tool. And you just type in whatever you want it to say. Let's do my name. Okay, so it's all uppercase, but you could do upper, lower, whatever you want to do, right? This is where you text edit. And it does one line at a time. So let's say that I wanted my full name on there. So there's a couple ways I could do it. Make that really small, come back in, add another line of text. Let's pretend this is like a mailing label, okay? So then I have my two text boxes that I can move independent of each other right? So that you can align them however you want to, to make it pretty. Okay. So, but keep in mind, this space is only half an inch big. So let me make this as big as I can and we'll print it so that I can show you how it compares from your screen down to your, okay. We'll just print this just for fun. Okay. So random images, but we'll pretend that it's something pretty. Okay. And then I'm going to click print. Now here is where you can say, oops, I noticed in this little preview that I want to change something. So to do that, you would click edit and it will just take you right back to make your changes. Okay. If I hit print and I think I want to print this on washi tape and rip it up so that I can just put it on my envelopes or, you know, I want it to repeat in a long strip, then you would do that right here with the repeatable printing. And you can choose up to 10 times to, re to print it multiple times. Okay or you can say infinite. 
So it gives you one through 10 if you're measuring a space so that you can get it exactly the same size, or you can do infinite and it will just print as long as you're moving your printer until you stop. We'll just do it, we'll do it two times so you can see the duplicate print, okay? And now I can say send to printer. So it's gonna connect to my printer, make sure it's awake. Okay, so you can see the little action light flashing up there. Okay, it was receiving the image and now it is ready to print. And right here, it tells you how to print right there on the screen, but I'm going to show you. Okay, so some more tools that I like to use are these ruler guides. Okay, so there's, this is the 12 inch ruler guide. And this one is the six inch, which we'll use since I zoomed, we zoomed our camera in. Okay, and it basically it's showing, it's designed in a way to work with the magnetic mat, but you can use them without the magnetic mat. I just like to, because look how great it holds your paper in place when you're working on your project, okay? So I just have a piece of white paper here. Another thing I like to work with is, this is the great big We Are Memory Keepers scrap pad, desk pad. And I like to use that because a tip I have is always do a test print. Since we're just playing today and we're not really, you know, I'm not really putting it on a final project right at this moment. I don't do a test print, but usually I print it to make sure that it's the size I like and that the colors are what I actually like when I see it in print. You don't always have to do that. I just found I like to. So you can see that this guide magnets my paper right down to this magnetic surface. And these are all available at Michael's. They're really handy. You can completely use the printmaker freehand if you wanted to. You don't have to use this, okay? All right, so I knew it flashed. I knew it's ready. This ruler allows a little space right here for the printer to sit before zero starts, okay? So this edge of your design right there will be at the zero on your ruler mark, but there's another way to tell if you're using it freehand. See this light that's shining out of the printer? That edge of that light is where it's going to start printing. So you can see that it's lined up right there with the zero, okay? Now, when I'm ready to print, I just hit that action button on top and it will flash and make its little happy sounds and turn green. And then you just, in one motion, just swipe. So there's my repeat print. So you can see that it printed it twice right there, okay? With, with very little space in between. Now, if I wanted space in between, it would be the opposite of the tip that I gave you before, where before I said, if you don't want white space at the end of your canvas, just extend your canvas. And however much space you leave at the end is the space that it would create between the repeat printing, okay? All right, any questions, Jimena, that I'm missing? Um, one question, does, uh, I, I don't know if you already said this, but um, can you print on fabric? You can. Ooh, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. So I'm going to pause on printmaker functions and show you what you can print on, okay? I brought a giant ring right here, okay? This is my giant ring of things that I've printed on. And I have a new one that I need to add. So this is polymer clay. It's not a pretty shape, but I was able to print on the polymer clay before baking it. So I rolled out the polymer clay. This was a test, but it worked. So I wanted to add it to the class today. So think of jewelry, think of, you know, whatever you're making with polymer clay, if you want to give it texture or a pattern or a print, because there's lots of pretty things you can print using your printmaker. Um, print it on the clay and then bake it like normal. And then it is solid on there. If you get it wet, it will bleed because this is an inkjet printer. So think of it that way. Think of it as inkjet, right? It's not a laser printer. So it's not that permanent ink. It's that ink that can move again. So this is the polymer clay, but once, if I got this wet, it would come off, but there is a way around that. You just get a clear sealer. So go run to Michael's when you're getting printmaker supplies and wandering the aisles, seeing what you can print on. Grab one of these clear mats, or it can be a gloss if you want, whatever you want. But just like when you're sealing anything that, you know, can run, like if it gets wet, like a paint or a watercolor like that, you just would do a quick coat of that and then it won't bleed if it gets wet. So polymer clay, we've got air dry clay. I printed on that once it was dry. This one is salt dough mixed with a little bit of white acrylic paint to make it whiter. And that it worked really great on. So you're wanting somewhat porous surface surfaces. So we've got wood and you can see that has dimension, but what's cool about this printer is it can print on things that aren't completely flat. This is a wood craft stick, a great big wood craft stick. Anything that is a printable material. So like 
photo paper is meant to work with an inkjet printer. So it works great on photo paper. This is inkjet printable sticker paper. Works great, doesn't come off, right? This is matte sticker paper, inkjet transparencies, like wander the aisle and find, or wander, you know, Amazon, wherever you're looking and see what there is that's made for inkjet printers. And it will all work great with this. This is printable magnet sheet. So you could print your own little magnets, works on office stuff like sticky notes, manila folders, manila envelopes for shipping, shipping labels. This is a great big shipping label. These are the printmaker labels that they have at Michael's. These are designed that are, they're already the exact size of the height of the print area. So they're really fun to use. They also have the printmaker tags, which there's a variety of sizes in here because you can do multiple lines of print. So these are really fun and they're gold foil and they're really fun. And those are at Michael's too. So it works on shipping paper. You can print things on your packages when you send them so that they're really fun for the recipient to get. Bubble envelopes, cardboard, butcher paper. I'm just gonna flip through this whole thing of what I've tried. Gift wrap, it works if it's matte. So this was a matte gift wrap. If it has a gloss on it, it's not gonna work as good because remember we're looking for something that's a little porous so that that inkjet ink, when it gets sprayed down into the material that you're printing on, has somewhere to go and adhere. Okay, doilies, paper napkins. So I'll show you at the end some, some different end use for all of these things. Fabric bags, lunch bags. You can send your kid a little note on their lunch bag or put their name on it. Glassine bags for parties or treat bags. Gift bags. Paper gift bags, again, if they're glossy, it's not gonna work as good. These are kind of a craft material or the plain white ones at Michael's work really well. And you can make your own gift bags. And here's all our fabric section for those of you who are asking about fabric. So there's cotton, printed cotton, linen. I'll show you some end uses of those. Knit fabric, like a t-shirt, canvas fabric, felt. This is the acrylic craft felt, wool felt, leather. So you want an untreated leather. So this one's like, a suede or the backside of a coated leather. But when I tried it on this side, it didn't adhere. It was too glossy, right? So it works on tooling leather really well because it's made to take stain. So anything that's made to take an ink is gonna work really good. These are all the printmaker ribbons and printmaker washies that we're going to, that they have at Michael's that are just white linen ribbon and washi tapes that have a backer so that you can run it through and not have it like be sticking, you know, cause you know, regular washi doesn't have a backer most times. So those are made to have a, a backer. So those are all right there. You can print on all kinds of ribbon though. So these are all different ribbons from Michael's. So there's sheer, all ruffled, wide ribbon, wired ribbon. It works really good because that just holds it in. Matte board for like photos. A whole bunch of art papers work really well. So it works on hot press and cold press watercolor paper. Marker paper, mixed media, Bristol paper. I'm just flipping through these. This is synthetic paper, which is like a UPO paper. And it worked really good on that as well. Crepe, which is really fun for parties. You could make your own custom streamers with your birthday person's name on them. Tissue paper, fun for gift giving. Also, you can wrap tissue paper around a candle. I'll show you that in a minute. Printer, regular printer paper, notebook paper, pattern paper. You can add journaling straight to your cards and layouts. Vellum, parchment, freezer paper, card stock of both in smooth and textured, glitter paper, pal paper, chipboard. This is cereal box weight chipboard. So it's a little thinner, still works. Foam, this is just regular craft foam. This is really fun to incorporate into your projects. It works on glitter foam too. This is canvas paper, burlap paper. So it would work on burlap ribbon as well, cork. So you can see that it's like really a huge, huge, chunky swatch of everything that I've tested it on that works really, really good. Let me show you some end things that you could do with that. So Shannon, just yes, a bunch of questions came in while you were okay. showing a bunch of questions. Work. Good. Let's bunch answer them. Yeah. Um, so the first one is uh, about the polymer. Um, I forgot the name. Polymer of it. clay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you print on it after you you bake it? Have you tried I that? found, well, the, the one that I used, which was just a regular standard polymer clay. So I didn't test it on all the different types. So I don't know if there is one that bakes more matte. You want a matte surface. So if it has a glossy finish at all, 
the ink is just going to beat up on top of it because it is being like, think of it as it's spraying the ink down onto the surface. So it needs something to absorb into. So if it's too glossy, it can't absorb into it. So I found with the polymer clay I trust tested, it was just standard, regular Michael's polymer clay. It didn't it didn't stay on. I could just go like this and it would just wipe right off with my finger because that would happen if you tried to do it on glass or here's an example. Here's another tip. So remember how long ago I sent that image? I'm just going to show you an example. So this is a really glossy surface. Okay. If you go off onto this surface, you can see that I can move that ink with no problem. See how it's just like wipes right off. Okay. So think of it like that. Like it's it has to have something to soak into, okay? So the polymer clay I used was too glossy for that. So I found it worked better if I did it like, this is just a random shape, but let's say you were doing an earring, you would cut out your shape, print on it, because you can print using these guides, you can print on things really easily. Like I printed on this wet and I just held my guide over it just like this and printed on it. And the guide didn't leave a mark. It didn't leave any, any ridges or anything in my clay. And it just helps you stabilize the printer as it moves across the item. So that's what I would do is I would just make, let's say all my little earrings, right? And then just, let's say I wanted them all floral. I'd print a floral border and just go whoop, across, the, across all the earrings and then bake them. That's what I would suggest doing. When it comes to fabric, I saw there was some questions about washability. So again, this is an inkjet ink, so it will wash out. So there are things you can do to your fabric to make it more stable. So the first thing you can do is think of things that probably aren't gonna get wet that you could do with fabric. So like this is a bingo game that I made with the printmaker. So this is a fabric cover that's holding my bingo cards. But I know that most likely, like in case something spills, I guess, while we're playing the game, it may get wet. But most likely, this is just going to be in my game cupboard or in my holiday box. And it's a fine thing to print on the fabric and it's not gonna go anywhere. So I didn't treat it with anything or do anything special to it. I just printed it, okay? Another thing you could do though, if you wanted it to be on something, like let me show you something else fabric I printed on. So this is a velvet stocking. <clears throat> I have all kinds of stuff down here. <laughs> so this one is a velvet stocking that I just printed stripes on. Okay. So this one I might want to set, right? So there's different things you can do. So Google fabric fixatives. That's one solution. Okay. They make this solution that you can pre-wash your fabric in that makes it so that this will adhere. And then there is an aftercoat that you also do. So that is a, a liquid fabric fixative. You could also, if it's something that you don't, you know, you can use fabric Mod Podge on it. So this is a velvet. So I probably would have done fabric fixative on this one because of the texture of the fabric that I'd want it to stay really soft. But you could do a little test like on the bottom with your Mod Podge, like just right down here, just do a little test and see if it's gonna make your fabric feel any different because there are fabric Mod Podges that would seal it in. So like for shoes, you can print right on the side of a shoe. I've done it before. These don't show it. The ones I printed on, I don't have, but you can print like right on the side of a shoe with your printmaker, just use your guide like this, okay? And I would just print right on the side of my shoe like that, okay? It's really cool because you can use this to help you print on all of the 3D items. For that, you could totally use the fabric Mod Podge on it because it's a canvas shoe, it's gonna be on your foot. It's not gonna matter if it's a little crunchy, you know? Cause that's kind of what that fabric Mod Podge is made for is to like seal in shoes, seal in different treatments on fabric. You can also do that if you're, um, wanting again, the clear coat. So like these are salt dough. These are little ornaments I made on the salt dough and the ribbon was also made with the printmaker. So these were really easy to make, but if I wanted to give them that clear coat, again, remember you can come in with a, with a clear coat. So if you can find a spray fabric fixative, there might be one that exists. I don't know if Michael's carries one. I haven't really looked there yet to see if there is one there, but you could spray a coat on to help it. <laughs> if you're doing a t-shirt, I would say for sure to do the liquid fabric fixative. I've tested that one and I know it works. Another fun thing is like we, we tried in our testing on fabric. I made a birthday shirt for a little person, right? Or a onesie. Like you could do this for a onesie. Like I'm one month old, print that on the onesie, wash it. It will come right out. You can use that same shirt or onesie again for something else. Excuse me. I'm going to grab a sip of water. So there's 
there's times you may just want it to wash out, but if you want it permanent, look into fabric fixatives. That's the best workaround on fabric. Another fabric thing that I did not treat, <coughs> excuse me, is like a canvas banner. So like this is a birthday banner that is made to go for Jovi's birthday party. So you can like, if you have kids with unusual names or grandkids with unusual names, the printmaker is really fun because you can use it to personalize things. So all the color on these was done with the printmaker, every single thing. They were just plain canvas banners like this. And then the ribbon was also done with the printmaker that it's hanging on. Okay, these are all repeatable patterns in the collections there. They're really fun to use. And this, I don't worry about it getting wet because it's just gonna go in a birthday box or just be used that one time, right? So I wouldn't worry about treating the fabric on that one. Did that answer those fabric questions? Yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, Is there any others? Yes, about four more questions. So, okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and ask two in one. Um, can you print different color letters at the same time? And can you print um, vertical or so that the letters? Yes. Vertical. Let's play with text for a minute on the app again. Okay. So I left my name on there. So there's different ways that you can do that. So. What you would need to do to have everything be a different color is put them in one at a time. And I know it sounds annoying, but here's the cool thing. You can save it, right? Okay. Also, I saw someone's question about why their canvas is moving instead of their drag line. It's just where you're grabbing. This is why sometimes I like to design on my desktop because I can use my mouse to grab that little corner handle and pull it so much easier with a mouse than with my big finger on my screen. So that's just a personal preference, but you'll get used to it as you use it. But if your canvas is moving around that they made it movable so that you can extend it and zoom out and still see it all. So that's why it's moving. Okay. At the top here, you can see there's a little grab handle right there. That's on the top of a little line that's to turn it. So let's do vertical printing and multicolor at the same time. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn my, rotate my letter and I'm gonna move it up here. Let's change the font too, so I can show you how to do that. So now that I'm working in font, you can see all these font editing tools are down here. If you click the word font, this shows you all the fonts that are available in the app. Okay, let's do a big chunky one so we can see the color. Let's do this one. Okay, now to change the color on a font, that's all I do is right there, select it and there's, either these pre-done colors, or you can insert a custom color right in here, like find it on the color wheel, okay? Let me do a brighter one, okay? All right, next letter, text. Okay, oop, see, I'm not good at it. This is why I like my mouse. Use my tiny finger. If you have a stylus, it helps too just because my finger wants to grab the canvas instead of the little handle on the letter. Okay, and then I'm gonna make that bigger. Now I could even print this with all different fonts. It doesn't really matter. Like you could choose whatever font you want. Okay, let's change that color, let's do pink. Okay, so that is how we'd start building our word. This is another reason that sometimes if I'm doing something like this, I like to design on the computer because it's just quick clicks, right? Okay. You can also get your letters a little bigger when you print them vertically. It's interesting. So if you wanted to do a print one at a time to do a horizontal word big, you could do that. I don't know that I would want to, but you could if you wanted to. These are like not the greatest colors together, but we're just playing today, right? Okay, look, you could even do a mix of vertical and uppercase. Let's print it and see what happens. Okay, I'll do it freehand this time. Okay, we're gonna print down. So I'm just making sure that whichever way I'm going, my little action arrow is pointing that way. So you'll notice I was going left to right this way, right? Now I'm gonna go top to bottom this way. So I got a one little white line in here and just like any ink cartridge, it may need to be cleaned occasionally. So in your refill for your ink cartridge, there's, and in your box when you first get your machine, it will have a little handle. I lost my handle somewhere, but you can just use the little cleaning cloth. 
and you just flip your printer over and take the little cleaning cloth and just swipe it across, right, to clean the print heads. Also, if you're getting any weird marking, you see you might just need to clean like just gently just around the edges of that print head. Let's try printing again and see if that solves the issue. Again, I don't have to send it to the printer again because it's already sent. You can print it over and over and over again without sending it to the printer again, the same image. Ah, much better. Okay, so let me see if you can see that. I don't know if you can tell, but see that white line? Now I clean my print head and it's gone. Okay. So there's all kinds of things you can do. Where are we on time? Okay, we have a few minutes left. Okay, <clears throat> does anyone else have specific questions? Because I want to make sure that I'm answering the, your questions before I just keep going with my spiel I planned. Um, yes, uh, one of them okay. is, does the app, app have um, automatic updates or do we have to do it? If we, ha we have to do it, how would you go about doing that? So you would do that, it, it should automatically update, although on my iPad it didn't. So I don't know if that was my setting, but I didn't have my app set to automatically update on my iPad. You can change that in your app settings to just auto update <clears throat> for all your apps in your app store. Um, but if you need to update it, then just go into your settings on your device, not in the app, not in the printmaker app and find the printmaker app. And it will tell you right there, there's a little button that will say update. And you can just click it and it will automatic and then it will update and download it to your phone. So they do update it every so often as they're fixing the bugs and things that they're finding that are going on with it. Okay. Um, another question is, does a mini printer have to be used with a smartphone or can you, it, can it be used with a laptop as well? As long as your laptop has Bluetooth connectivity, it should work. And as long as your laptop can have the app because it prints from the app. So I guess that would depend on the constraints of your computer. So you could definitely design on your, on your laptop that you would probably need a smart device. So a laptop or tablet of some sort to connect the app. Like I have a Surface, which is kind of like a laptop, but it's more like a tablet laptop hybrid and I can download apps to that. So I am able to Bluetooth connect and work actually in the app on what's kind of like a laptop, but it's just a, a larger tablet with a keyboard. So it just depends on your personal device if it will work or not. Another good question for customer service, they can help you walk through it and, and talk you through how to set that up. Perfect, um, two more questions to go. Um, can you use the app to make letter letterhead and fancy eight by 10 pages on a regular printer? You cannot. So this app only works with this little printer. So you'd have to do that in some other design software. This one's just made to be handheld and to do quick little things. Now I could make a whole sheet of things by continually printing down like this, but that's where you have to be selective and decide what are you creating? Does it make sense to use the printmaker for that? Or if you're just printing like a whole letterhead or a whole entire huge long document or a bit of, you can do wedding announcements with it, but depending on how much text you have on there, do you really wanna use your printmaker for that? Or do you wanna just printmaker the envelope or printmaker the return address where it's one little swipe? So you can do multiple lines of text. Let me show you some other files that I've designed real quick to show you how you can do multiple lines of text. Okay, so like this one, it's all still within that 5 8 inch but when it prints, it printed this line of text. This is an, a basic shape that I just stretched and made into a line and then that text. And so you can see that this is all one color, but I can make it all different colors, right? So whatever you can fit in that five eighths inch, you can do, but then you can also design things so that you can print one line at a time. Let me show you an example. So this is a birthday invitation right here. And so each of these lines, so this it's Jovi's birthday was one file. Please come was one, one file. The border was one file and this banner was one file. And then each of these was one file. So what I did was, since I was doing a whole bunch, I figured out where with my ruler, I needed each of these to start. And I printed, 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 printed on all, you know, 15 invitations, this line. 
Then I went in and selected my other file, which was this line or this line or whichever one you wanted to start with, right? It doesn't really matter. And then I would go and print that line on every invitation. And then I did the same thing with the tags. I figured out my spacing, which a tip is you can use these other lines on the ruler. You can use this bottom line to help you line up spacing. So like sometimes I will say, I want it to print it's going to print right in the center of this opening. This rulers are really handy. I say pick up one of these at the very least. It will really help you. So you can test. This is another reason I test print is I'm trying, if it's like dead center, but I have space above it, but I want it right below that, then I will probably like shift this up and use that bottom line as a guide as to where I want my next line to be. Or you can use the, there's ridges in the ruler. You can't probably really see it, but there's one right there you can kind of see, right? All these different points on the ruler are really good spacing guides. So like I could line it up there and know that that's gonna print perfectly above it, right? Or I can move it up one and use this ruler guide. And that also helps you keep multiple print passes straight. So that's what I did here. And I just printed the tags, but I did banner, 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 text, 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 text across all my tags like that. And that's how you can be faster about it rather than going in and out of every single file to print. Okay, here's an example of, I'm just going to show you some quick examples. This is an example of doing that infinite printing, right? So you can upload photos. I didn't show you that, but let me show you where it is so you can play with it. Come on. So in the tools where it says images right here, you click on that, it takes you into your phone images and you can go in and you can pick, like here's a picture, okay? And you can pick whatever picture and it will come up on your screen and you can print it. So that's how, so that's just like a screen capture, random picture, but you could really do any picture. So this is a picture of Beth, right? And then we made a custom gift wrap just by printing it across forever long. As long as you can reach, you can print. Okay, <laughs> this was ribbon that was printed and a tag. You can print on 3D items, like this is a notebook, right? It's kind of chunky, but again, this ruler just helps you to just doop, put it right on there, okay? And it keeps it level. So your printmaker can just slide right across. Um, you can print repeat printing for weddings. So this one is a photo map for a wedding. So this has all of the different, of the names of the bride and groom. And flowers just, you know, there's all kinds of uses you can do. You can also print on a ribbon. So there's your ribbon in a wreath for spring. Okay. There's tons of inspiration in the app too. Go to that inspiration section. This is another stocking. We did a lot of Christmas stuff for something in the past, but this one was printed. This design was printed vertical to get it bigger. And then this was printed horizontal and then it was used as a stitch guide. So that's actually, we printed it in a really light gray color and then embroidered it by hand. So that's hand embroidery on that stocking. So there's all different ways you can use it. You can use it for labels. So I just did a class about organizing and this was how I like to organize my paint. So I don't forget what color it is and where it was used. There's so many, many things you can do. This is the tissue paper on a candle. Okay, so we just used a heat tool to heat it on there. So be really, another tip I have is be innovative about what you're thinking about you can print on. You saw this giant ring, right? It can print on a ton of stuff. You can print on so many fun things. You can use it directly on a layout to add journaling. You can use it on envelopes. Oh, there's so many things. I could just go on and on. So I hope this was helpful. I hope some of your questions got answered. I'd love to do another one of these classes where we do questions and answers again, because we want you guys to have so much success. Look on YouTube, find people's tips and tricks. There's a lot of awesome makers out there just like you who are figuring this printmaker out and finding really unique, fun, innovative ways to use it. So awesome. And I hope to see you in a future class. Have fun with your printmaker.